I strongly recommend you stop scrolling down and just take a look at this video for a minute. Some very important stuff. You can click now on your screen to make sure you've got good sound. And you want to watch these three tips about epoxy floors. I'm going to tell you three major mistakes we are seeing with epoxy floors all the time. So what are the three beginner mistakes? The three mistakes we're always seeing in epoxy floors that beginners commit. First one is poor surface preparation. This one is big. Surface prep is the most important stage of epoxy flooring and if you don't do it correctly, you are going to mess up. Many people want to rush through the surface prep. You do not want to be doing this. This is what happens if you don't prepare the surface properly. The epoxy floor will break and you don't want that, you're going to get a very upset customer. Or you'll get this. I mean, look at this. This is horrible. You do not want to be responsible if this happens to an epoxy floor. You want to make sure you're doing proper surface prep. And by proper, we mean grinding and cleaning the surface so you will not have any sorts of problems when the epoxy needs to bond with the concrete. Remember, it's not just chemical bonding, it's also mechanical bonding. You want to make sure that both the resin bonds with the concrete chemically, but also you want it to be anchored in. So mechanical bonding is just as important as chemical bonding. And the second mistake, what's the second mistake we're seeing? The second mistake we're seeing is that the resin is not being mixed properly. Epoxy systems are two component systems. In other words, you have an A component and a B component, and you need to mix these together before you apply them. What happens if you don't mix them properly? Well, the worst thing you'll get is sticky floors. There's nothing worse than having a floor that's sticky because the A and the B component were not mixed properly together. You'll also get other problems like loss of hardness, dirt being picked up and the floor gets dirty very quickly, and just poor bonding because the resin has not been cured properly. Important point, look at these guys here. Always use an electrical mixer when you're mixing the A and the B component. You cannot use a stick, you cannot shake the bucket. It's very, very important. You need to use a proper electrical mixer when you are mixing the resin and the hardener component together. A few more points about mixing two components together. A lot of rookies make the mistake of confusing weight with volume. When you read 3 to 1 weight, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a 3 to 1 volume. Weight and volume of epoxy are different. So please do not mix these two up because that could also lead to curing problems. And let's look at the third mistake we're seeing in epoxies. We see a lot of beginners, when they apply epoxy coats, they get a lot of, they get a lot of bubbles in the epoxy screen. Now, what causes bubbles, like the picture here? The main one is air in the concrete slab. You get a lot of bubbles when there's air in the concrete slab. And how do you prevent that from happening? Well, the main way to prevent that is you need to make sure that you've primed the surface very well, you've sealed the surface well, so the air from the concrete cannot rise up and attack the coating. Very important. And one other great way to prevent bubbles in your coating is always using a spiked roller, especially when you're applying thick leveled, thick leveling coatings, because if when you apply a thick epoxy screeds, you're always going to get little bubbles. You need someone with a back with a with a spiked roller eliminating all the bubbles and making sure you, that you're going to get this beautiful smooth surface like the one we're seeing in this picture. You can you can achieve such great surfaces. The main point is you need to make sure that you're following the instructions correctly. Always use a spiked roller. And here's an extra tip. Always have a spare one available because you never know when a spiked roller might break down during your, um, during your projects. So what did you think of those three uh, points I just discussed? Do you want to learn more about epoxy flooring? Because this is a great chance. You can learn much, much more by joining our online epoxy course. Now, what exactly is in this course? You're going to have access to six training modules, six long form videos where you get to learn all the stuff I've explained today, but much more detail and much, much more stuff. You can watch the videos and consume the content at your own time. You can watch the videos as many times as you want. Here is a screenshot of the actual course where you log in with your login and your password, and then you can just choose which video you want to watch. What's in the course? Let me quickly go through what, it's, what is covered in this course. In the first module, we'll look at the key stages of epoxy flooring. So we'll look at the surface prep again. We'll look at priming. 
grouting, filling the cracks, and finally coding. In the second module, we'll discuss the various types of systems. There's paint systems, there's more thicker self-leveling flooring systems, there's anti-slip flooring systems. So we're going to discuss all that in module two. In the third module, we'll look at chemistry, epoxy chemistry. We explain in kind of simple terms what exactly is the A and the B component? How do solvents come into play? What about temperature? What happens when it's really hot or when it's really cold? How will that affect your project? And how will that affect the resin? In module four, we answer all those questions, all those questions that seem to come up again and again. For example, can we apply epoxy on tiles? Or can we apply epoxy on wood? And what if I mix products from different companies? Is that possible? And also, what about applying epoxies outside? Can I do that? Or will the sunshine and the UV exposure damage the epoxy? You will learn all, all about that in Module 4. In Module 5, we, look, we talk about organizing projects. We, we explain how you understand the workflow and how you, understand, how you organize your workers. We talk about having the right equipment to take on epoxy flooring projects. And we also talk about good work practices what are the best ways to get a great project completed successfully? And in module six, we go beyond epoxies. We talk about polyurethanes, we explain the differences. We explain why would someone want to use a, a PAP or a polyasparic, maybe a MMA coat. We go into other types of floor coatings. We kind of explain what the story is behind all those coatings. So now's your chance. Click on the link or the button, and you can now have access to this online course. A few things about myself before I close. I've been involved in floor coatings for many, many years. I have my own, I'm involved in manufacturing and application. So I'm really, I'm, I've developed this course because I really, it's the stuff I would, I wish I would have had learned myself when I, when I first started out with epoxies. I wish someone would have taught me this course. I figured it out by myself. Now I'm giving this knowledge back to you. If at any time you find out that you don't want, you, this course is not for you, it's not what you were looking for, you can always ask for a refund. You have 30 days to ask for a refund. And just so you know, we have students from the US to the Philippines to Nigeria. I have students now who have completed the course and they're sending me pictures from their, their projects. And they're really proud and showing me how great they're doing and they're, they're thanking me for their progress. So this is a great opportunity to join the course. And the most important part is the price of actually enrolling in this course. It's about the price you'd pay for a large epoxy pack. It isn't that much. And if you sign up, you will also get some additional bonuses. Your first bonus is you get to watch a recent webinar on self-leveling floors. This was a, a specifically for self-leveling floors and how you can get nice, smooth floors. Your second bonus is a list of tools, supplies, and recommended equipment for the epoxy flooring contractor. You'll get lots of good ideas here on how to, how to set up your epoxy team. Finally, there's a third bonus, and that is a checklist we've prepared. Before you're about to apply the final coat, you know, you need to check, are all the doors and windows shut? Have we properly swept the floors? Have we marked off all the areas? These are important points to keep in mind, and sometimes you tend to forget them. This checklist will become very, very handy. So, Click on the link now and you can get access to the course. Thanks for watching. See you soon.